it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net, and this tutorial is going to demonstrate how to paint Christmas candles in front of a window, so nighttime window scene with snow. There's three red candles in this, but you can customize the color of the candle. You can also make it an advent wreath by adding a fourth candle in there as well. I'm going to quickly go over the brushes that I used. So I used a three quarter inch flat wash brush and a number four round brush. Those are Princeton Velvet Touch brushes. And then I used a 12 bright brush, which is like a half inch flat brush. And that one's a Royal and Lang Nickel brush. I will link to those brushes in this tutorial as well as the colors and all the materials that I used. So I'm going to go ahead and get started right away. I'm using an 11 by 14 inch canvas and I have it in a vertical format. I'm going to go ahead and draw the table line. So the line that divides where the table is and where the window starts and that's about four inches from the bottom of the canvas. So if you're using 11 by 14 just take the ruler and measure four inches. If you're working on a larger canvas or if a different size you can measure about a quarter to a third of the way up. So we're just making little tick marks at four inches and then I'll do a horizontal line. This is just a regular drawing pencil, by the way. And then horizontal line across. You will want to load your palette with the color Thalo Blue, which is a really pretty dark, rich blue color. And you'll need Mars Black as well, but I don't have that loaded on my palette yet. We'll be using a three quarter inch flat wash brush. Go ahead and load that into the water. Kind of tap it dry, but I'll leave a little bit of water left on that brush and load that into the paint. So when I load that, I just kind of um, dragged it out on my palette to let that water kind of distribute with the paint. It helps thin it, thin it down, but it also helps your paint be nice and flowy and thin. So basically, this is the window area we are painting with all up and down strokes. And you want to start in the middle and just kind of leave a gap on the left and the right side of the canvas. So right here, all in the middle, you are doing vertical strokes of that blue. Because we have water in there, it may not look consistent. We might have streaks that are darker or streaks that are lighter, and that's kind of okay. We're creating this effect that there's the sky in the background, but it doesn't have to be solid same color. Then go ahead and load your brush in Mars Black. So that's that color I just loaded on my palette. We want to blend this black on the left and the right because that's going to be the darkest part of our sky, our window. Um, pretty much our candle is making the center part of the window lighter and then the outer parts, the left and the right, it's going to be darker. So we are blending this black in with the blue. That's why we only, only loaded like a little bit of black on our palette because we don't need much. It blends very quickly. It's a strong color that can take over fast. So you just want to gently blend that in. But you don't want to bring your black too much on the center part because the center part is lighter. And we're just doing all up and down strokes. See how it, that black just kind of blended with the blue. And the center part's still fairly light. Do the same thing on the right side. Add your black. I'm actually adding black and blue on this side, but you can do it the same way we, what we did on the left side. So I loaded my brush in the black and the blue, and I'm going to bring this in. We're going to need some more blue on our palette to get this to blend. So I'm grabbing that blue and blending that in that transition zone where that blue and black meet. If you are finding yourself, this is just getting too dark and too much black is going in the center, you can always rinse your brush off and kind of start over so that black doesn't spread too much. But we just want to do the best we can to get that center to be lighter and the left and right part to be a very dark color. So notice how I went down um, over that line. So we can still see our table line here. Uh, we will do a layer of brown that overlaps that. So that's okay that those lines went under those, those paint lines went under that line. So we're going to go ahead and load our palette with burnt umber and titanium white. Those will be the colors that we'll use for our table. Go ahead and rinse that brush off and dry it. Get all that blue off and double load your brush in brown and white. So I loaded that in the brown and the white, kind of mixed it together on the palette, but it doesn't have to mix together all the way. I'm going to start at the bottom, 
the same technique that I did with the background sky, only I'm doing left and right instead of up and down. So I'm doing full width left and right strokes going all the way across the canvas, well, almost all the way. You can stop halfway and then drag that the rest of the way. Um, but as you approach the, your table line, you just want to be really careful to make sure you define that table line. Try not to go above the line. If it helps, you can use a piece of painter's tape. I haven't used painter's tape in a while because sometimes it lifts the paint up and it makes more work to do than needed. But just be really careful to go up to that horizontal line. So what's happening with mine is my blue hasn't dried yet. So it's creating kind of this blue that's mixing with the brown. That's okay. Kind of makes that area look a little bit shadowy. That's fine. Um, if you like that look, you can add a little bit of blue up in that area and mix that with the brown if you like that shadowy look. If yours is not doing that shadowy thing, that's okay too. Um, Let's try to get the top part to be a little bit more shadowy. So if your blue is dried, add a little bit more of the brown without the white at the top and add a little bit extra white at the bottom so that it kind of fades from a dark to a light at the bottom. I'm using my T-square ruler to help me line up that line. Just be very careful, especially if your paint is still wet as you're holding the T-square. You don't want to smudge any of that blue paint in there, but that kind of helps get your line nice and horizontal. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of white and just really quickly just kind of streak that in with the brown that's not dry yet, so it's blending, but I don't want to over blend it. So that few streaks of white kind of gives it that wood texture look. And then we are going to let this dry. So you can take a break, come back, or use a blow dryer to dry your painting really quick. Um, when this is dry, we're gonna go ahead and draw the window pane lines. So I'm using a white color pencil, but you can use a piece of chalk or chalk pencil for this, whatever shows up best for you. And I did, my horizontal line is not center, it's like two thirds of the way up from the bottom of the window. But my vertical line is pretty much center, maybe a little bit off center to the right. It doesn't have to be exact, and I don't have the exact measurements of mine. So just kind of estimate where you want your vertical line to be and your horizontal. And next we're going to use our number four round brush in titanium white to paint snow dots. We're gonna take our brush and so this is everything that's through the window. We only see snow falling. We don't see trees or moon or anything fancy, just little snow dots. And basically, I'm taking my round brush and just painting little clusters of dots. So you want to vary the size of your snow dots. Some might be larger, some might be smaller. They're kind of clustered together. And I'm kind of making the direction of my dots go in an angle. So just add as many snow dots as you want all throughout the painting. Don't worry about where the candles are gonna be. Um, the candles likely will be covering up some of the snow dots in the middle, but for now, just focus on adding snow dots all throughout your window area. And next, without rinsing that brush, I'm gonna go ahead and load that into our brown. This is that burnt umber color. I added a little bit of water into that, that brown to kind of loosen it up. It'll help with the flow. So you can do this. Basically, we're gonna paint the window pane line. So what we drew with that white pencil or piece of chalk, we're just going back over that with brown. Um, you can do it with the round brush. I did find it easier to just do it with the flat brush, so the 12 bright brush. So I'm actually going to switch here. So with the round brush, your line gets kind of wobbly. and You don't have as much control with those vertical lines. So with the flat brush, I'm holding it with that paint right there on the tip. And I'm able to use the bristles 
to create a much easier line. So it's up to you which one you prefer. Um, with the window pane lines, I'm kind of varying that color. So I added a little bit of black to my brush as well, kind of darkened up one side of it. Um, you can do the same or you don't have to. You can even use some of that white to create some variation, especially in the part of the sky that's dark. So to create contrast with that brown, if I just used the brown and didn't mix with anything, it might be too dark and won't show up. But adding white into that helps that brown show up against that darker part of the sky. So we can utilize that white, especially like right here. Gets that window pane line to show up much better. And then down here at the bottom, I'm using that lighter brown with that white to just kind of create another line that's right at the bottom of the window. Next, we will go back to our round brush. Rinse the round brush off, dry it. So we're gonna create some snow that's kind of accumulating on the window pane lines on the outside of the window. And we wanna use some fresh titanium white for this. Um, you just want to be really careful, especially if your window pane line dry, window pane lines are not dry. Um, you don't want to mix your brown into it, so just kind of be really careful not to touch any of the brown. Um, get really close to it, but try not to blend that brown in. So we're just creating little clumps of snow in the corner right here. So it's kind of accumulating in that spot. And then we'll do it to the other side of this window. So kind of the same thing. So it's a little bit thicker on the corner and then it just gets thinner kind of going up vertically and horizontally. And then we can do it to these corners as well. We likely will have candles covering this up, but that's okay. We don't have to worry about that at this point. drag this along a little bit more horizontally. We can always add more snow later after the painting's done wherever we want more snow to kind of show up in the window. And then a little bit more snow along this horizontal line as well. Next, I'm going to show you how you can create some glare on your window to make it look like that's glass. So it is, for the most part, see-through. So we wouldn't really need to paint glass, but we might see a few sort of reflections, especially since there's a candle in this painting that might be reflecting light on the glass. So I did this dry brush style, and I'm using the 12 bright brush. You can also use the three quarter flat brush if you wanna do that because it creates the wider strokes, but you can do that. So basically for dry brush technique, you wanna load your brush in a very small amount of white and you want to wipe that brush off. And so see what the effect is that I'm doing. Um, so when you're loading the brush, you're wiping it off and you're only allowing a very small amount of paint on your brush. And you're using the full width of it to just kind of drag that very quickly. The brush is barely touching the canvas. Um, you don't wanna to press too hard. We don't want this to be opaque like the snow that we painted on the little corners. We want this to be very see-through. So that is how you do the glare on the window. When you're done with this step, you're gonna to need to let this dry before moving on to the next step because we're gonna be drawing the candles and you don't want any of your paint to smudge. 
Um, for the candle part, I'm going to be using a piece of chalk to draw the candles. If you want, you can print out a traceable template for this. This will help you um, get the candle drawing in without drawing it. So you can print that out if you prefer to use the template. If you're drawing this with me, you can use a color pencil or a piece of chalk. I'm going to use both. I started with a color pencil, but switched to a piece of chalk. So I'm going to do three candles. And for the candles, I like to start with that top little elliptical shape. So it's like a 3D. We can see kind of the top part of the candle. So do a narrow elliptical shape. Your T-square ruler is really helpful for this because you can do your vertical lines. So you do your elliptical shape and then you line up your T-square ruler to the edge of the canvas and you can do your lines so that they're going vertical. I'm going to go back over what I just drew with the pencil with the chalk. The chalk will show up much better on the camera. So you have your elliptical shape. So if you wanted this candle to be thinner and taller, you would just make that elliptical shape thinner and more up high. Um, for the vertical little wick, do that right in the middle and then do a little flame shape. I'm just going back over the vertical line. So the bottom part, that part needs to be curved. So there's our first candle. And like I said, you can change the width of this and the height. You can do just one candle. If you want to just paint one candle, you can do multiple candles. I'm going to have this one overlap. So if you're overlapping the candles, you're just basically drawing it slightly in front of the other one. So this one is about the same width. So your little elliptical shape vertical lines. We're going to have the lines go down a little bit further below the one that we did before. And then do your little wick and flame shape. And then this one, we can do our another little elliptical. So if you're making a candle that's thinner, this is kind of what it would look like. It would have a the elliptical shape is not as wide and the vertical part goes up. I'm actually going to redo that one and I'm going to have it overlap this one but be slightly shorter than the first one I did. So the nice thing about chalk is it does erase. I use a wet baby wipe to erase the chalk and it comes off very clean. You just don't want to press too hard with the wipe because you don't want to lift off any of the paint but it helps kind of get the placement of your candles right. If you're doing this as an advent wreath, you can do a fourth candle in there. You can have them be um, behind this one on the right, or you can have it be behind the front one. So just when you are done with the, the chalk drawing, you wanna go ahead and load your palette with titanium white and pyrrol red. I'm doing red candles. So I use two different reds for my candles. I used pyrrol red and alizarin crimson. Um, no matter what color you're doing with the candles, you still need to do this step that I'm going to do. I'm gonna prime my candles first with white paint so that they will be opaque and show up against the dark background. So this is pretty important. Otherwise, the candles are gonna to be too see-through with the color and it's not gonna get that grade of coverage. So I'm using the 12 bright brush and the titanium white and I'm basically just going to paint a layer of paint on my candle. But I still want to kind of pay attention to my strokes and like the direction of my strokes. So I'm going in a curved direction along the shape of the candle but I'm using the tip of the brush to kind of outline what I'm filling in. So right here I kind of outlined that edge, but then curve direction to kind of fill that in. You don't need to fill this in 100% solid opaque white. That's not necessary. Just one thin layer of primed to, to prime that shape is enough to get our candle to be have good coverage. This candle right here, so I added a little bit of black in there to make it gray. So I'm essentially priming this one with light gray just because this one's overlapping and I don't want to lose my shape that I drew. 
and I don't want it to all be the same color. I still want to kind of see where it stands out. So that's why I did that one in a slightly darker color than the one behind it. You still want to have your strokes to go in a curved direction that helps create the shape and form of that candle. We want to make it look 3D. And then the top part, that elliptical part, I just did that with the white. So same thing for candle number three, go in a curved direction. So candle number three, I used white and not the light gray. So it's still a different color from what's to the left of it so that I don't lose that shape and it stands out. You can see that I outlined that shape using the tip of the brush, defining that shape of the candle and then filling it in. Again, you're going to see dark from that table and dark from that sky showing through. That's okay. Our next layer is going to be red and that red is going to cover up most of what's showing through. And that white is going to provide us that primed coverage that we need to get that red to be nice and opaque. So that's what I did to prime my candles. You can see it's done very loosely. There's still a lot of color showing through. It's not solid. That's our first layer of our candle. We're gonna go ahead and do our next layer of our candle. So I use the color Pyrol Red for this, but you can use any red. You can use Cad Red Medium Hue. You can use Primary Red. Primary Red's kind of a pink color. You can use literally any color red that you have, or you can change the colors. But we're gonna do the same thing um, that we did with the white, but go back over with the red. For the most part, this white is dry. There's a little bit of it that's kind of blending with my red, and that's okay. Um, if you don't like that it's blending, you can wait for it to dry completely and then go back to this step. But I kind of like that that white is kind of blending with my red here. Kind of creates that color variation that I like in my paintings. But also, since my candle shape, I'm painting it in kind of a curved direction, that white is helping to create that 3D look in that red. So again, you want to use the tip of the brush to outline the edges. And then in the middle part of the candle, you're going in that curved direction. So for the most part, I don't see my sky from the window or the brown from the table showing through. That's because we primed it first, but also I did not over blend it. So there's some white streaks in there. And if your white layer was dry and you did this and you like that look, you can actually double load your brush in some white and have that white and red kind of blend to create those white streaks. For the top part of the candle, I recommend using the round brush. That way you can get in there and paint this smaller area and have more control. But I did white and red mixed together. So I'm just double loading my brush in the white and the red. A little bit more white. This part is slightly lighter than the rest of the candle because the flame will be hitting that part and it helps that part of the candle stand out. For the next candle, I used Alizarin Red Crimson Hue. Um, again, you can use any red, preferably a darker red. And the reason why I chose a darker red here is just so that can stand out. We have three of the same color candles next to each other. So we really want to create contrast with the part of the candle that's touching to the other part of the candle. Otherwise, it'll all just kind of mesh together. So this is Alizarin Crimson, and I'm doing the exact same technique using the tip of the brush to outline the edges and then curved strokes in the middle part of the candle. My prime part, that white part, is not dry for me here. So my red is blending, and that is okay. If yours is dry and you wanna have that blended look, Go ahead and load a little bit of white onto your brush and the alizarin and crimson and then do your curved strokes and that white will just kind of gently blend to create that curved look and that unblended look. And then you'll want to use your round brush to do the same thing for the top elliptical piece. So load it with the white and the red and then go ahead and paint that top piece. I 
also slightly outlined the edge here of this candle with the round brush. And then next we have the candle on the right. So that one is back to the first red, the pyrrol red. So the same red as we did on the candle on the left. So go ahead and do the same technique. Use the tip of the brush to outline. Use the full width of the brush to do full width curved strokes to create that 3D shape. And this one, the uh, white base color is dry. So you're gonna see the difference of what happens when that white is dry and it's not mixing. So it ends up being that solid red. You can still create shape and form by doing your strokes in a curved direction. But then you can add a little bit of white on your brush and do the curved stroke thing there. Just very gently add that white into the red, let it gently blend in there, and that creates that color variation. And then we can use our round brush to do our red and white and paint that top elliptical part. Then I'm gonna take my titanium white and you don't need to rinse your brush off for this, but just take a little bit of white right there on the tip of the brush and on the upper right part of the candle, very loosely outline the top part. That helps to create some contrast um, when you outline part of that. So on the far right helps, especially the candle in the middle, helps it kind of stand out. And the candle in the middle, there's some darker red towards the left part of the candle then that also creates some contrast enough for that to stand out against the candle on the left. Next, we are going to paint the wicks of the candles and I used a number four round brush for that in the color Mars Black. So I'm gonna go ahead and freshen up your palette with some more black and use the very tip of the brush to paint the three wicks. So those start in the middle of that elliptical shape and then go up a little bit higher than the candle itself. So into the flame area. And then I'm gonna just kind of loosely outline the left part in the bottom of this candle. So it's super tempting to wanna to outline everything, um, but unless you like the look of everything being outlined, you don't wanna outline everything. So, but if there's a part of the candle that needs to be like a little bit darker, you can loosely outline that if you want. Then I'm gonna show you how to do the flame. So the flame is done in multiple steps. And the first step is actually gonna require us to use our finger to finger paint the glow part of the candle. So on your palette, you wanna load the color primary yellow, and then you wanna use that pyrrol red. So freshen up the red if needed. And you wanna mix an orange on your palette. So you need about three parts yellow to one part red. For orange, you always need a higher proportion of yellow than red, otherwise it's just gonna turn into like a dark orangish red color. So I just used my round brush to mix that color. Adding more yellow into there so it's lighter. And then you wanna take your finger. So I'm gonna just use my index finger, load that into the orange. You don't want a whole lot on your finger at first because it might be too much, just a little bit. And you wanna just take your finger and you want to create like a circular glow. So we're not staying in the lines of our flame shape. We are creating a glow and it's gonna go around the wick. So part of that glow will overlap the top part of that wick. You also wanna make sure that black is dry because that will smear with the paint. So you see what's happening. We're creating this very translucent layer of paint. So this is the outer glow of the flame and we'll be adding the shape of the flame in our next step. I'm just taking that and making a circle shape going outwards. You can even go back with a second layer and add a little bit more yellow right there in the center, kind of make that bright. But we will make that more bright on purpose 
in this next step when we use our brush. So next you want to go ahead and grab your round brush. So I'm going to use that paint color that's already on it, that orange color that I mixed. This time I'm going to fill in. So I lost my drawing, my chalk drawing, but that's okay. We can create our new flame shape. This time we are painting in an actual flame shape. So the glow is already on the outside part of that. The part where we used our finger, that's on the outer part. And this is the second layer. This is our actual flame shape. So we're painting that. It should show up if it's the exact same color and it's not showing up. You can add a little bit more yellow into it or a teeny bit of white into it to get that to show up. Um, we are going to be using white in a later step here. So you, just, you don't want this to be super bright at first. This is just the next layer. Again, it's going to overlap part of our wick. So that's kind of that the one on the far left. I actually added more yellow into that so it would show up a little bit better. And then next, we're going to mix white and yellow together. We're going to create, and for some reason, the camera did not show that on the palette in the bottom right area. But it's basically adding white and yellow together. So white and yellow makes a lighter yellow. And then you want to do this in the middle part of your flame, but you don't want to cover all of the orange flame. You're making kind of that lighter yellow in there, so a smaller flame shape inside of your bigger flame shape. So this is layer three. And then you want to completely dry this so you can come back to this step when it's dry or use a blow dryer and dry it really quick. We want to do layer four and layer four is going to be just white. So we want to rinse that brush completely off and load it in just titanium white. So there's white right there on the tip of the brush. And layer four is a very bright little slither of white right in the center of our flame shape. And that is going to create that realistic fire looking glow. And then a very, very thin slither of white on one side. So you can pick any side of the wick and just loosely highlight that. I'm gonna add a little bit extra white on the top part of our little cylinder elliptical shape. So I'm just kind of picking one side and just kind of dragging some white on the top, letting that show some of that highlight from the flame. If you want to do the wax strippings, you can, if you don't like the look of this wax, um, of the little wax stripping down, or you want to watch how I do it, you can kind of decide if you want to do this or not. But I just took titanium white and then I just made like little vertical, little kind of wavy, slightly wavy vertical line going down from the top, kind of resembling wax dripping down. So you can do a few of those, you can do more if you want. You can kind of vary it, so some are a little bit thicker, some might be a little bit thinner, some might be dripping down a little bit further. Next, I'm going to take a baby wipe. So you can also do this with a wet paintbrush, but I find that the chalk residue still kind of shows up if you use the wet paintbrush, but if you use a soft wet wipe, it will wipe up the residue too. So basically I am erasing any chalk lines that are still showing. This is of course, if you used the chalk to draw the candles that you want to just be careful if your candles are not dry, you don't want to smear any of your paint. So we are going to focus next on the greenery that's at the base of our candles. So we have the pine needle sort of wreath thing going on at the base. Of course, you can skip this step if you're simplifying the painting, if you want to just paint a few ornaments or cookies for Santa or anything on the table around the candles, you can definitely customize that. So I'm going to start with my 12 bright brush and I'm going to load the brown in it first. Mixing a little black in that to darken that brown. So you might need to darken it or lighten it with white depending on where you're painting this because we should be able to see it 
So basically we're painting, using the tip of the brush, we're painting lines. These are the lines, the center lines of our pine needle branches. So I'm just taking that, just kind of painting these lines that kind of are going out from the base of our candle. We can do a few and then add more later. So there's just like three or four lines that kind of are sticking out from the bottom. And then, so you can see if you needed to add more white to it for it to show up better or make it darker, depending on the color of your table. And then we're gonna do green. So this is the Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. And I'm loading that green just on the tip of the brush and I'm creating the little pine needles that are going at an angle and outwards, starting from the center part of the line and then striking outwards to create the little diagonal pine needle lines. And you're gonna do the same thing on both sides of that branch line. And I recommend mixing different colors of green on your palette so you can use the yellow you can use the white and that's gonna help your green stand out better. If you use just the green solid, it may not be opaque and it may be too dark for it to show up in these darker areas. So if you mix your green with the white, it shows up much, much better. And then also it creates some color variations. So you can mix, you can use, do a few pine needles that are darker and then go back and do a few that are lighter. Then you can go in there and add some yellow into your green to make it more like a varied, like a yellowish green color. So you're just going back, going in and doing your little diagonal lines with each of the little lines that you drew. This step does take quite a bit of time to do because of all those little pine needles that we're painting, but just take your time and you can kind of zen out to this. You just wanna make sure, so if you need your pine needles to be darker, you can actually use a little bit of that red and that'll darken that green up a little bit. So if there's an area that's um, light and you want your green to stand out, you can make it darker. And then the opposite would be true is if, if there's an area that's dark and you want your pine needles to stand out, you can use the white and the yellow to lighten it up. So notice the direction of these pine branches. So if we divided our canvas down the middle vertical, um, all the pine needles on the right, they're all kind of going diagonally to the right and on the opposite side. So on the left side, all the pine needles are kind of going diagonally, different directions, but still diagonally towards the left. There's a few that are kind of going downwards, especially um, on the candle in the middle, they're kind of pointing a little bit more downwards, but that's how you can create some different variety of angles in your pine needles, but also kind of make it look like it's a wreath that's surrounding the candles. So go ahead and take your time, add as many pine needles as you want. Keep in mind that I'll be doing some holly leaves in here as well as some berries. So you wanna kind of leave some space for that. Um, if you want to do ornaments, you can leave space for that as well. And then I'll be doing a couple little silver bells as well. So I'm gonna go silent here for a little bit while I finish this step.
Okay, next I'm going to do a little garland kind of hanging down at the top. So I'm just using a number four round brush for this and the green. So depending on how dark that is, actually we're just going to do solid green at first because we'll add lighter colors to this later. So after you do your two little kind of curved lines, go back and add little X's. You're just doing little X strokes along your line and that's gonna create the texture of the garland, that Christmas tree style garland. So little X's of the green, kind of all the way across. If you want, <laughs> I accidentally grabbed some red, but if you wanted to make it a little bit darker in some areas, you can add a little bit of red in there. Just be really careful not to add too much red and then it'll turn solid brown. Um, but that's our first layer. And then you can go back and do a second layer. So I'm gonna add white to my palette and without rinsing the brush, I'm gonna grab white. So the intent is to not make it look like it has snow on it because this is inside but it is meant to lighten this up. So if we go back with our white and add a second layer with this, it's doing this wet on wet blending thing. And that's making that paint color show up a little bit better. It gets that dark background, but also creating some texture, some color variation. We don't need to over blend this, over mix it. It's okay if there's some brighter areas and some darker areas, that's kind of the point. So there's our second layer for our garland. And when this dries, we can add little red berries in there. Next, I'm going to paint some holly leaves. Those are those kind of spiky sort of style leaves. Um, I wanna mix a different kind of green because if I use the same green as my pine needles, it's not gonna show up. So I mixed a whole bunch of yellow into this green and this is some green on my palette. There's probably a little bit of red in there too. And then that hooker's green hue permanent just so it's lighter and titanium white as well. Just make a green that's lighter than your pine needles and it's gonna stand out. So you're just taking your brush and painting the shape of that leaf. So there are these inverted sort of curved shapes. And then the tip of that leaf is pointed. So that's your first layer. We do that line down the middle. And so with these holly leaves, the second half of it, so one half of it is going to be darker than the other half. And before this dries, I'm just gonna add my darker color in there. If it's not doing that for you, you can let it dry and come back and then do your second half, half darker. So it's the inverted sort of pointed leaves. Half of it is a lighter color. Half is the darker color. And then I'm going to do another one on this side. You're welcome to change the placement of these leaves. You don't have to do them if you don't want to. If you don't want to do the holly leaves or if you want to do more holly leaves, you're welcome to. So same thing, I use that light yellowish green to do the shape of it. And then half of it is dark and the other half is light. So go back in with your darker color on one side, leave the other side light. I'm going to go ahead and actually mix a lighter green color on here. So white with this yellow green on my palette. So this is basically white, the hooker's green heat permanent, the yellow, the lighter version of this. I'm just going to go back on the second half and that's a lot lighter and it shows up a little bit better. You may not have to do that depending on how your green turned out. Yours might be lighter and it's showing up nicely. Mine was just a tad bit dark. And I wanted the second half to be much, much lighter than the other half. And if needed, we can outline these leaves with a little bit of black or white. I'm actually going to kind of wait for a later step to outline these because these are saturated and super wet right now. So let's go ahead and actually dry these. I'm gonna use a blow dryer to dry all this really quick. Um, we are going to do the berries. So I have pyrrole red. 
and we can do little circles. So this one ended up with three circles. And then the one on the left, also three circles. Solid coat of that color. And then we can take our white and on the left part of each of the circles, a little tiny white highlight that also creates form on your circle. And then we can do little red dots along our garland. So, uh, actually rinse this off so I can use the pure red for this. So red and little red dots kind of throughout the garland create some pretty contrast in that area as well. Next I'm going to paint the little jingle bells. So there's two little silver bells below the front candle and to do that I used silver but we're going to have to paint that circle white first. So you can do this with silver or gold or copper or any color you want. I just recommend you paint it white first so that it's nice and solid. And so I did two circles. This is still that number four round brush. Solid white circle two of them. And since I have that white, I'm going to go in and add a little bit more snow to my window back here. This one as well. A little bit more snow piling up. And then a little white kind of dot on one side of each of these berries gives it a little pop of highlight as well. Then we can load our palette with the color that we're gonna do the bell. So I chose silver and you wanna make sure your white is dry before doing this step. So go ahead, dry it. And then we're gonna do the number four round brush again and add a silver coat over that white circle that we painted, both of the white circles. Then you'll want to wait for that to dry or dry it yourself with a blow dryer and then take your Mars black and your number four round brush and do a little circle towards, not exactly the center, um, but toward kind of off center, a little circle and then like a little curved line going to the edge. And do the same thing on the right circle, curved line going from the circle to the edge. Then we want to make kind of a darker version of that silver. So we're gonna take that silver and add a little bit of black into it. So whatever color you're using for the bell, just make a slightly darker version of that color by adding a teeny bit of black into it. And then right above where we did that little bell opening, we're just gonna do like a curved line for that center part of that bell. A little tiny notch at the top of that bell. And then we can take some of that darker color and add a little bit of kind of shading on the bottom, but you don't have to do that if that's a little too advanced. It gives it a little bit of shadow towards the bottom. Then I rinsed the brush off, grabbed a little bit of white. I'm gonna loosely outline my holly leaves here with the white just on one side not both sides, but just one side, kind of let that pop a little bit. So loosely outlining with white. I kind of mentioned this earlier that you can loosely outline with the white or the black. I'm actually gonna do both sides of the leaves because I like how that looks. So I outlined both sides of the leaves and I had, did um, that line in the middle as well. A very, very thin line and that really helps that holly leaf to kind of stand out better, especially since the pine needles are green as well. 
I also took that white and just kind of um, loosely outlined the top part of the candles. And then this is optional, but I'm adding some kind of brighter white highlight to the candle over here, kind of dry brush style. So what we did with the window earlier, I'm kind of doing that to the candle, but I'm using the round brush for it. Only kind of barely, barely touching the canvas with this. So I did this to the two tall candles kind of on the inner parts of them on the top. So I kind of did a vertical line on the edge and I just sort of dragged my brush in a curvy direction towards the middle. That adds a little pop of lighter color in that area. It's not solid white. So it's kind of see-through and translucent. That part right there was a little bit more solid, but we don't want to cover all the red. We just wanted to add some lighter kind of translucent white to kind of brighten that area. And then this part is also optional. I'm taking that black and I'm just adding a very, very loose outline. I did this on the far left part of the candle in the middle. Um, and it's tempting to want to go in and add some dark shadow in there, but I'm not going to do it um, very much. So right here, I just did a little bit of black right there. And then maybe right here, very, very loosely, some black. But that's it. Nothing too crazy. Our tutorial is coming to its conclusion. I hope that you enjoyed painting Christmas candles with me. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.